This is the best or worst podcast. And now, here are your hosts, Koji Steven Sakai and M. Martin Mapoma. All right. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the best or worst podcast, episode number 88. I am Martin. And I am Koji. All right. Our society is so focused on celebrity, we sometimes forget that regular people lead interesting lives too. Best or worst moment of your life, hosts Koji Steven Sakai. That's me. And M. Martin Mapoma, who is obviously me, are here to let your story out. We put people on the spot. What are you going to hear? It could be funny, it could be poignant, it could be sad. You'll know when we know. All right, and today we have the very special guest, my own blood, my cousin Soneka Kambuza. What are you doing? You tried, you tried with that last name, huh? Is that, am I saying it wrong again? No, you're saying it right, but you have to get, you have to enunciate right, right? It's Kamuhusa. That's what I said, Kamuhusa. Right. It's, it's, <laughs> it's you, have, you know, like it's Japanese, so you have to be yeah. like, you know, Kawasaki, Yamamoto. Is that true, Koji? Is that true? Kamuhusa. Yeah. Japanese yeah. is a phonetic, is a phonetic, so yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. In fact, half the time, you know, from my name, when I when I ever walked into an interview, I thought you I thought you'd be Japanese. That's funny because I get the opposite. I, I get really? the, I, they think I'm Kenyan. One time, one person yeah. thought I was Kenyan. <laughs> what? Yeah, because you have you, you know they have Sakai, right? Masai, yeah. right? Yeah. You yeah. know, so it makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> I have very... many Japanese names wow. that sound that sound phonetically like they would be they would be African. I just learned something new today. Koji, you get mistaken for Kenyan? Well, a couple of times I've been mistaken for Kenyan, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's crazy. And oh. by the way, I, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised because that's all my life in America, that's been it. Like before I walk in the room, you know, literally like, oh, we thought you'd be Japanese. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> now of course. With, I have um, no idea, Seneca. Yeah, with the advent of the internet, of course, everybody goes on to look for you and, you know, they'll find you and they'll know what you are. But that was before we had all, you know, all this LinkedIn and all that kind of stuff. Wow. So why, don't, why don't you tell us, what do you do for a living? So I am an educator, right? Um, actually, um, I have been an educator for over 20 years, but I wow. think I have morphed from um, being an administrator, an uh, education administrator. So I worked in the for-profit school business, technical schools and so on for um, a long time. And then uh, I used to be a teacher, a technical teacher. I used to teach computers. And then I became an administrator, meaning I actually used to run a department and then ended up running a school, you know, academic dean, director of education. I've been a vice president of education. Uh, for a uh, for-profit uh, group of schools. And then I've always run my own business. So I like to say educate, even though I'm kind of a serial entrepreneur. Um, so my current venture is uh, developing a learning management system. Um, not developing, I shouldn't say that. That's actually a lie. I am working on creating a knowledge base. It's, a, it's on a learning management platform. And I am curating um, learning courses and also um, pulling in other people that have interesting courses that they would like to teach and make money from and seeing if they would like to be hosted. So if you've been into things like Udemy and stuff like that. Yeah, I was going to say Udemy. Exactly, those big guys. Yeah, but I specifically target, I'm targeting the for-profit school business, non-profits, um, and trade unions, you know, where a lot of this kind of technical vocational knowledge um, is not curated in a way that is going to meet this new learning environment that way in electronic, the fact that with COVID, people really don't have a choice but to start learning electronically. So yeah. that's that's kind of what I've been working on um, for um, the last, since August since I incorporated in August, you know, wow. I, I was working with a nonprofit and I, I was doing kind of the same thing. We were running a computer, um, it's a computer site, uh, part of a national 
um, company, right? The national nonprofit. I'm trying not to say names, you know, names of people I've worked for because I'm not yeah. plugging anybody for free. Sure. <laughs> yeah. The days of plugging companies for free are like gone, you know. So yeah. um, so I worked with them and I started last year. And what we did was to to teach uh, technical things like Network Plus, A, A Plus for free. Wow. Yeah, to certification. Really good concept. You know, these guys have a very good concept. Yeah. And um, I loved it. Then COVID hit. And my school was the last school that was kind of brought on board, so to speak. Yeah. So as you know, you know, LIFO, FIFO, you know, last in, first out. So yeah, yeah, COVID yeah. thing kind of made that go crazy. That was much. And... You know, as Martin knows, I'm not the kind of person to sit around, you know, licking my wounds for too long. Yeah. You know, so I licked my wounds a little bit, and got up on my feet, and so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm hands deep into, into that. So, long way of saying that I'm a, I'm a life educator, basically. So, what, what made you get into computers and teaching, and what made you get into all that stuff? <sighs> Weird. Um, that's actually a great question. I've never thought about it in terms of what made me do it. I think it's always just been there. Um, at my core, I've always like, I'm an artist, right? I'm an artist and would, you know, maybe we'll talk about that um, a little bit. I have always been into music, singing. I was in bands and all this kind of stuff. And um, soccer and all this so what yeah, happened you, was you were a soccer coach weren't you not yeah i was a soccer coach as well i won a national uh, southern new england athletic conference championship wow. in 1994 with uh, newbury college wow. that's yeah. that's I, I remember seeing that because yes yes that's yeah, go ahead. Um, we'll yes, talk about that's, we'll talk, uh, we'll talk about that in a second but we'll go talk ahead about that your, in a second. Uh, yeah coach, so, yes, so yeah coach so when i when I was in college, I became like a TA, right? I was, um, I became a TA and then um, my, uh, Mr. Pelletier, who I can drop, I love him to bits. He was my, the chairman of my department. He asked me to teach when I graduated and loved it. You know, um, I did like, uh, I helped teach like summer school at Newbury College. And I realized that it's something that I, I just loved. He initially just brought me in like, you know, check it out, see if you, you want to do it. And then I also started doing continuing ed classes in the evening. So I'd work all day and then I'd, you know, I'd teach, you know, continuing ed people at the college who wanted to take evening. And this was in the hospitality department. And that really is what gave me the bug. I realized I liked coaching because I had been coaching soccer and I liked teaching. And that's what set the bug for me because I realized I had a knack for it. I love the idea of just seeing people's eyes kind of brighten. Yeah. You know, yeah. people get it. That's always been the yeah. thing that drives me. And finding innovative ways and interesting ways to communicate information that would normally be difficult to grasp. And I wasn't, I was a, I wasn't a great student. Not because I couldn't do the student part, but because I wasn't interested in that. I had so many other things going for me. So because I could pass a test, Without studying, yeah, I didn't study. <laughs> you know, um, words words you'll never get come out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I I I was I was like the B student who could always get a B without studying, who ticked the teachers off because they knew I could get an A, but I wasn't interested because, you know, I had my long list: girls, partying, drinking, you know, <laughs> just going DJing. You know, I had a long list about modeling. You know, acting. I had this long list of stuff that I wanted to do. And Are you Martin sure you're? I, I was gonna s- to this stuff. <laughs> yeah, I was like, it, 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 wow, this is you know, it's funny. You get to know someone even more when you talk to them in this in this format, as opposed to like talking to Sinek on the phone, because that was you know that was me. But keep going. This is we'll we'll right. we'll, we'll circle back to this soon because uh, right. this is very interesting to me. Um, right. So, uh, yeah, so that's how I got into teaching. It was more so, I think, an accidental plug by somebody that, um, you know, had, um, saw something in me. Mm -hmm. And then it's something that I fell in love with. And I've 
been in love with it ever since, you know, yeah. yeah. Just, well, I think there, I think there is a skill to, especially college students, teaching college students, and, and yeah. there is something different. It's not something that that everyone can do. I think so. I'm very impressed. Well, okay. you're also a mu- uh, artist. What kind of artist are you? You're a musician. Well, I'm a writer. A writer. Okay. Yeah, first and foremost, I'm a writer. Um, I am um, a musician. Um, when I say musician, you know, I think I used to tinker around on the piano, but I used to sing in bands. I've been in three bands. I was a lead singer in three bands. I have, what? Um, as, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm surprised you don't have this information. What, you know what? I, I am, I am, I'm immensely narcissistic. Uh, <laughs> no, I know. I, well, you know, well you're, you're telling me, this, Martin? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, because it's funny because, you know, the way, you know, Seneca growing up, man, Seneca was larger than life when I was a kid. And the thing is, because, and it's, I say kid, because it's funny because I believe I'm maybe a year older than you. Yep, yep, yep. Or two. I think but, you're, you're what? You're, you're turning 55? If I'm not yeah, in, Aug- in August. Yeah, yeah and I'm and, turning uh, 54 in August. Yeah, but your brother was, a, but your brother was my two brother years, is, two yeah, years exactly. older than you. Exactly, my brother's a year older than you, yeah. One year older than you. So we, I thought he was friends with Patu and Philip for yeah, some reason. Well, he wasn't necessarily. I mean, those are not like guys that were in his oikos. You know, no. but um, but you know how it is. We lived in a small yeah. place. We all knew yeah. of or knew each other. Yeah. But no, was... so yeah, but no, so Seneca was like larger than life to me. You know, it was he, he was he was he was always around, always doing these these big things. You know, and you know everyone knew Seneca was like the how do I put it for for me? You were like the he was like the the bad boy that you know that, for the, a lot the, of the, people that the, that, the, <laughs> that the ladies loved. And I I just remember when you and we got together. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure everybody in the family everybody in the family was like get away from me oh, it was no you know it was just uh it, it was you were just that guy man and you know you t- it's I, I i i remember some things well and i forget and then i then i remember certain things and they come back up and you brought up the djing and i, I remember you djing at studio city you know and yeah. Studio 22. Studio 22. Studio 22. I used to DJ with PVC back in the days when we used to do the showgrounds. Remember when we started? Yeah. Doing the showgrounds? Did That's the when hum- I started. And I think I was yeah. literally like at some point in high school. Yeah, I remember uh, that. Yeah. And then I used to model um, with yeah, like wow. any, any, any place that would, you know, that would uh, take. I used to model. I used to dance. You know, I used to. Yeah. So in our small place at a young age. Because I started singing in the Minch coming out of seventh grade, literally. Wow. Like I in seventh grade, I, I was in the band because my older brother was part of this group and they need a lead singer. And I became yeah. the main singer. And I think that's kind of what started the the thing, the Sonica thing, you know, that yeah. I was just a kid, you know, I was just a kid and I could sing. And to me, it was, it's how you relate to yourself versus how people relate to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what yeah. you're saying is how people related to me. Um, but I never necessarily saw myself like that until um, I could get girls. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, that's when I kind of was like, yeah, there's something to this thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That's so, hilarious. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> It's, wow. it's, it's, it, it is an interesting thing. So wow. I don't know. You had a question. I, I answered uh, Koji's question. I don't know if I answered yours. No. I can't what you we're, said. Yeah. No, we're, you know, we're going we're gonna, to, no, my question real quickly, because we're, we're going to wrap it up and move on to our next segment where we uh, get to know your best or worst, but uh, which would be Thursday. But, um, you know, it's because, you know, I, I, when I finished architecture school here is when I, I, I got into acting through modeling when I was here. You know, I sort of fell into it and then became an actor. And when I moved up to Chicago, you know, first of all, the parents were upset when I didn't, you know, become an architect. They were just like, what? You want to do what? But I remember you talk about your calling. I remember all that during that time in school and even as a model, I always exercised. I exercised because I was small and I mm. wanted to get, you know, I was fascinated with getting big and getting the muscles. And through my career and, you know, helping my friends work out, my turning point came when I, um, trained someone that I worked with for her wedding and got her into great shape. And then people were like, you know, all these other, you know, these girls were like, Hey, you helped her. Can you help me? And mm. it's sort of progression. And then in 2008, when the recession hit, 
And, you know, you, you, I went, Coach, you, you would understand this. I went from being, you know, getting auditions for, like, guest starring in movies. Yes. I, got bump, I got bumped down to, you know, day players because all the movies, all the movie guys and the TV guys that were getting the series regular stuff were getting bumped down to guest stars because they didn't know where the industry was going. And so I was on that tier for a long time, you know, for a little bit. And then my training career just sort of picked up. Right. And the first time I had a client who told me, I had a client tell me, you saved my life. And I was like, oh, come on. And she's like, no, you, you saved my life. You know, it really hit for me. I was like, wow. You know, this can be a really powerful, you know, medium to work in, you know, as far as being a trainer went, you know. And, you know, you hear about all the trainers, you know, you hear about the big gyms and, you know, their machine with trainers coming in and out. And the only thing they care about is getting the numbers in, not, you know, they're really helping their clients. Mm. And then you have the kind of, then you hear about the trainers who, I didn't want to be that trainer. I want to be the trainer that I am. Anyway, that being said, that's a great story, Seneca. Um, you know, we're going we're gonna to wrap it up. And uh, this is part one of our, of our talk with uh, Mr. Kamuhuza. There you go. Kamuhuza, Kamuhuza. The crazy, he's crazy. And, uh, he's struggling when it's his uh, cousin's husband. You know what I mean? That, that's uh, <laughs> he's going to have a hard time with you, brother. <laughs> nah, you know, come on, come on, you know what it is? It's, it's, uh, there's no excuse. Yeah, you're right. You need to pra yeah, you've been practicing this before you even got me here. We'll yeah, see how I that goes for you. Yeah, hey, we'll see how the next, we'll see how the next episode goes. Now you can see it. <laughs> yes. That's the next one. Yes. Why, why can't it be like this in awe? Huh? Can, can it just be that? You know, yeah. can it be that? Come on. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everyone for listening. Please rate, review, subscribe to the podcast. Yeah. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you in two days when we ask about the best or worst moment. From Soneka Kamuhusa. Keith out. Deuces. All right, guys.